Welcome to the May update for Space Age Collapse. After the last update, we decided that it's finally time for a playtest. However, in order to do so, we want to get basic accounts and infrastructure up and working. Since the game is an MMO, we need to allow the player to log in. Up to this point, we were just randomly generating an ID for the player and storing it in the browser cache. However, this was clearly a huge security hole. During a survey of similar games, it seemed like the popular choice was to allow a user to create an account upfront or potentially play the game anonymously and create an account at a later point in time. In order to get the support into the game, we needed a UI, we needed to create a new set of APIs and a database to store all these user credentials. Once we had the account system working locally, it was time to get the game up on a test server. Previous deploys had been performed with shell scripts on a Linux box, and I wanted to change this. I've always been a fan of one-click deploys since it allows non-technical people to see the game in a production-like environment. In the past, I used a mix of custom scripts and Jenkins to get the job done. But I've always kind of found Jenkins to be a little overkill for small things. Doing some research, I came across BuildKite, which seemed to be a reasonable solution that I was able to get working quite quickly. By clicking a single button in their UI, they communicate with a build server that you own. And then using shell scripts, it can deploy the game to an AWS box and also shove all that data onto a cloud object store where it's just cheaper to send down. Now that everything was on a server, it was time to have the play test. It became apparent that there was just too much data being synced now that we've been adding AI ships to the game. We quickly threw together a UI to visualize the traffic and using this data, started coming up with approaches to reduce it. Similar to an FPS, Space Age Collapse, each client will basically at 60 FPS, send a message to the server saying what the state of its controls are. The server in turn, every six frames or about 10 times a second, will sync back the state of all other clients to that one client. So this server has a sort of asymmetry to it. There's always a small amount of data that's sent from clients and a large amount of data that is sent back, that is sent from the server back to the client. So in order to reduce this amount of data from the server, we want to start culling the quantity of ship updates that were sent to players to only the ones in their general vicinity. So in this case, a client would know about what's going on at Earth, but wouldn't have any knowledge of ships flying around at other planets, which is great because this game is eventually going to be sharded, and it also keeps down network traffic. Similarly, we're also going to explore other ways to compact our data, but that's something we're going to address in the future. Speaking of additional network traffic, we continued our work with projectiles. We started to flush out both unguided and guided missiles. We have some initial graphics and are currently working on the AI. You can see right now it uh, still needs a little bit of work. In the next month, we're looking into ship defensive abilities, and we should have some more updates around them. Now, if you're interested in the game, please subscribe to the channel, hit like, or tell a friend. Have a great day.